Hello and welcome to Justice. I'm Judge Janine Pirro. Thanks for being with us tonight. We need to kill them. We need to kill them. The radical Muslim terrorists hell-bent on killing us. You're in danger. I'm in danger. We're at war, and this is not going to stop. After this week's brutal terror attacks in France, hopefully everybody now gets it. And there's only one group that can stop this war, the Muslims themselves. Our job is to arm those Muslims to the teeth, give them everything they need to take out these Islamic fanatics. Let them do the job. Let them have at it. And as they do, we need to simply look the other way. It is time for this to be over and stop sending American dollars to any Arab country that does not support this mission. Pakistan at the top of the list. Force Arab nations to choose. They're either with us or they're against us. And stop with this nuclear negotiation nonsense. They don't operate the way we do. You can't negotiate, you can't mediate, and you can't bargain. You can't even reason with these people. Now, Egyptian President el-Sisi, a Muslim in a country 85% Muslim, rid Egypt, the largest Arab country, of these Islamic fanatics. He threw out Hamas terrorists and outlawed the Muslim Brotherhood, the mother of all terrorist organizations. And ironically, days before the attack in France, that same president, El Sisi, called for a religious revolution to take out the violent jihadists. He called on the imams and the religious establishment to lead the fight, saying the entire world is waiting for their next move. Now, I've been telling you for a year that they're coming for us, that there is a reverse crusade in progress, a Christian genocide, hundreds of thousands of innocents killed in the Middle East. And seven months ago, I said that we need to bomb ISIS as it began its steamroll through Iraq. Bomb them, bomb them, and bomb them again, for which I was roundly criticized. Our country's response to this threat? The FBI destroys tens of thousands of documents deemed offensive to Islam. The CIA removes the word Islamic before terrorist in those Benghazi talking points. The Fort Hood massacre, the Oklahoma beheading, both workplace violence. Are we morons? Of course, none of this should be a surprise, given that our president invited the Muslim Brotherhood to fill the first two rows of his apology for being an American speech in Cairo in 2009. And as we cower to these Islamic fanatics, our president and former Secretary of State Clinton say they will prosecute the man who made the video, free speech be damned. They call murders accompanied by Allah Akbar workplace violence. This surrender is nothing more than a coward's response to the fear of this fanatical terrorism. And this political correctness will be the death of us. They can kill us, but we can't hurt their feelings. I'm surprised the president hasn't signed a new executive order that simply says, don't offend Muslims. And make no mistake, as sure as I'm talking to you, there will be efforts to limit our First Amendment, our free speech, to comply with Sharia blasphemy laws, which call for death to those who slander the Prophet Muhammad. And at a time when we have never been in more danger, our president is focused on free community college on his continuing march to reduce the size of the military and eviscerate our national security. Our government's response to the terror threat is to have an interfaith dialogue to try to understand and empathize with the enemy. And when they want to shut us up, they call us Islamophobes. Muslim groups like CARE and the Nation of Islam have been integrated into our society. 
Muslims invited to worship at our National Cathedral in Washington, D.C. We're directed by a political correctness that is so bizarre, so disconnected from reality that it does nothing but assist our enemy in our own destruction. They have conquered us through immigration. They have conquered us through interfaith dialogue. And they have conquered us by co-opting our leaders into a position of embarrassment. Now, the Prime Minister of France just a few hours ago stated that France is at war with radical Islam. Why can't our president even say the words radical Islam or Islamic terrorist, let alone protect us Americans? It's not like we haven't been, uh, that we haven't suffered from these fanatical terrorists. Thousands of Americans have died at their hands. The World Trade Center, the USS Cole, Tanzania, Fort Hood, Benghazi. And but when the head of MI5, one of the most secretive positions, shows his face to the world saying that Britain is going to get hit next, it is time to get serious. And as this, as this Islamic cancer metastasizes throughout the world, Boko Haram in Nigeria, Al-Shabaab in Somalia, Ansar al-Sharia in Libya, Al-Qaeda, ISIS, and as it goes to Europe, it is headed our way. Our forefathers gave up everything, their fortunes, their families, their lives, to create a government where free speech and freedom of religion were sacrosanct. This surrender, this refusal to even call it what it is, is an insult to my father and my grandfather and everyone who served in the armed forces who fought to protect what is sacred to every American. Yes. It is time for this to be over. And that's my open.